Hello students, welcome to this session of materials, metals and non-metals. In this session we are going to discuss about the metals and the non-metals. See there are large number of materials around you. These materials based on their properties are classified into metals and non-metals. You must be knowing iron is a metal, copper is a metal but carbon is a non-metal. Oxygen, the gas which you are inhaling, is a non-metal. Carbon dioxide is a non-metal or it is a gas, right? That is a compound. Carbon is a non-metal. Hydrogen gas, that is a non-metal. Whereas gold is a metal. Aluminium is a metal. So how do we categorize these elements into the metals and the non-metals? See here are, this is a picture of copper. Copper is obtained from these copper nuggets. It is a metal. This is gold. Gold is again a metal. Iron is obtained from these iron ores. From the iron ore. This is iron ore. Aluminium is obtained from bauxite. This is bauxite. Diamond. Diamond is a form of a carbon. Right. So diamond is not categorized into metals. It is a form of a carbon. So it's a non-metal. Right. There are certain properties of metals and non-metals which we will be discussing in this chapter. That is your materials, metals and non-metals. Wood is a non-metal, whereas tin is a metal. Plastic is a non-metal. If I talk of, uh, say, silver, it's a metal. Graphite, which is present in your pencil lid, that is a non-metal, right? Aluminium is a metal. Likewise, your, uh, what else are the metals? Iron is a metal. Nickel is a metal. Platinum is a metal. So what is the basic difference between the properties of metals and non-metals? How do we categorize these elements into the metals and the non-metals? Let's start this discussion. I think you will be finding uh, interesting. You will be finding this topic very interesting. There are about 118 chemical elements known at present of which only 98 elements are known to occur naturally on earth. What are elements? See, elements are the purest form of a substance. Right? Say iron. Iron is an element. Copper. Copper is an element. Platinum is an element. Likewise, sodium is an element. See, all these elements, they have got single type of entity in it. See, if there is, if I am taking this iron bar, what will be there? There will be some particles within it. It is, it is composed of, say, small, small particles. These particles are all the same. Say elements are made up of minute particles. And these particles, they are all of similar type. There is no difference among them. That is why element is known as the purest form of a substance. Any substance. Based upon their properties, elements are classified into two main groups. Metals and non-metals. It's here written as, say, 118 elements are known, of which only 98 elements occur naturally on Earth. Rest of them are synthesized in the laboratories, right? Here in this topic, we are concerned with the properties of metals and the non-metals, about the, with the categorization of elements into metals and non-metals. Now let's see what are the properties which differentiates metals from non-metals. Metals you are aware of and non-metals you are also aware of. Oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, see oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, Helium, if you are aware of, it is a gas which is filled in balloons which fly high. These are all non-metals and these are all metals. 
right i can also write here silver you must be aware of this gold you must be aware of this these are two different group of elements now they are categorized into metals and non metals let's see the properties of metals first physical properties of metals what do you mean by physical properties it's just the properties it, it doesn't tell about the chemical reactions which an element is undergoing or which a metal is undergoing it's just the superficial the physical properties first is the malleability what is malleability the property due to which metals can be beaten into sheets is called malleability metals can be beaten into thin sheets with hammer you must have seen say gold sheets are available you can see the silver foils which were previously used to decorate sweets aluminum foil can be also formed copper foils can be also formed foils are what foils are nothing but they are thin sheets and how can they be obtained they can be obtained by beating a particular metal with a hammer see these are the sheets is a silver sheet silver foil copper foil gold foil these are thin sheets these metals they can be beaten into very very thin sheets this property is called as malleability it's simple had this property not been there we would not have been available we would ha not have been uh, uh, using so many articles of metal right this property makes us utilize metals for different purposes you must have seen copper you have must have seen copper utensils or the uh, these days these there are the steel bowl available with a copper base copper base is over there this is why because these metals they can be beaten into thin sheets with the help of a hammer so this property is called as malleability at the same time if i am taking graphite and i'm if i'm beating this it will get crumbled into pieces it will get powdered graphite is present in your pencil lid or in the pencil lid if it is beaten with the hammer it will crush into the powder coal coal is also a form of carbon you can beat this coal into thin sheets if you beat it with a hammer it will get powdered again right so coal graphite they are all what non metals they are the form of carbon hydrogen is present in the gaseous state nitrogen is present in the gaseous state oxygen is present in the gaseous state so there is a difference between metals and non metals metals have the property of malleability that is they can be beaten into thin sheets whereas non metals they cannot be beaten into thin sheet let's see the next property of metal the second property is ductility what is it the property due to which metals can be drawn into thin wires is called ductility right see this is a copper wire you must have seen this very really, this can be drawn into thin wires so gold silver copper aluminum all of these can be drawn into thin wires right whereas if i'm uh, talking about the non metals they do not have this ductility property these are copper wires which you must have seen so the property by the virtue of which metals can be drawn into thin wires is called ductility and the property by the virtue of which metals can be beaten into thin sheets is called malleability right see likewise aluminum wire of course the strength of these wires depends again on the property of the metal but a metal can be drawn into thin wires and sheets let's take up the next property one of the property of metals is electrical conductivity what is electrical conductivity it is the substances say first of all i'll tell you conductor what are, what is a conductor it is the substance which 
allows current to pass through it. is called as conductor. Right? And the property due to which it allows the current to pass through it is called as conductivity. Or it is, yeah, it is the conductivity. You can say ease of flow of current is what is conductivity. This is a conductor, the substance which allows current to pass through it. And this is conductivity, ease of flow of current. Metals are very good conductors of electricity. Why? Because they have got free electrons. Now what are electrons? Electrons are charged particles. These are the particles which have got charge on them, right? You must have observed, say, when you rub a comb on your hair and then just put it above the uh, pieces of paper, bits of paper, the paper is attracted towards the comb. Why? Because the particles of the comb have got charged. The charge has been accumulated. That is the charge. These are, this is, these are the particles. But your comb is not a good conductor of electricity. It's just due to the accumulation of the charge on the comb. The so charge particles are present in the metals. These charged particles are called as electrons. So if I'm taking this copper wire and I am connecting it to the power source. Right? And I'm just putting it, uh, putting a bulb over here. Right? The current flows through this copper wire and reaches the bulb. And the bulb glows. See, I'm not drawing the circuit over here, right? The electrical circuit. I'm just trying to tell you that this copper wire is a good conductor of electricity. Current flows through this wire and bulb gets the electrical energy. If I'm connecting, see, a plastic wire with nothing over there, with no metal inside to the power source, no current will be conducted, right? So metals are very good conductors of electricity. Why? Just remember this thing. They have got the charged particles called electrons. And these electrons conduct electricity. They act as a carrier, you can see. These electrons, they conduct electricity. So do remember this thing. Metals are good conductors of electricity because they contain free electrons. And these electrons conduct the electricity. Right? But non-metals are not the good conductors of electricity. Except for graphite. Graphite is what? Graphite is a form of carbon and is a very good conductor of electricity. Do remember this. It's like that. The other property of metal is thermal conductivity. Thermal means therma, meaning heat, the temperature. Thermal conductivity. It is a heat conductivity. So what will be a good conductor of heat? A substance which conducts heat through it. Right? The energy through it. Will a wooden block conduct heat? Say, if you'll put wooden block in fire, it will burn and turn into ashes. But if I am just putting a wooden block in wooden block close to a substance which has got very high temperature. See, I am taking this metal block and its temperature is high. If I keep this wooden block in close contact, see this is a metal block. And a wooden block in close contact with it. Will this wooden block heat up? No. Because wood is the poor conductor of electricity. Sorry, thermal. Heat. Whereas metals, they are good conductors of heat. That is why the cooking utensils are made up of metals. 
say pressure cooker it is made up of aluminium copper utensils were used in ancient times for cooking why because copper is a very good conductor of heat these days these days which what is used for cooking the steel vessels are used for cooking right now what is the steel it is an alloy of iron or it is a mixture of iron nickel chromium a small amount of carbon so these vessels are used for cooking why so because they are good conductors of heat they carry heat or they get they get heated up easily right now let's see a few more properties of metals metals are sonorous what is so what do you mean by sonorous metals produce ringing sound when struck with an object you must have observed this say when you uh, struck or strike the bell in a temple it produces a ringing sound just try to struck a steel vessel with an another uh, with any other object it will produce that tinkling sound that ringing sound you'll observe you'll hear that ringing sound and that property is known as the sonority or sonorous right so what is sonority it is a property by the virtue of which metal objects produce a ringing sound when struck hard with the object your steel vessels just struck it with a just strike it not struck it and sorry just strike it with any other object it will produce a ringing sound that property is called as sonority right this is one more property that is metals are solids at room temperature all the metals are solids whatever metal you find at home just uh, see iron you can find iron right you can uh, find aluminium you can find copper at your home i'm talking about you can find gold or silver right so all these metals these are the metals which you can find in your home only there are many other metals like sodium is also there potassium is there calcium is also a metal right now these tin is also a metal this is tin so all these metals are solids at room temperature the only metal which is liquid at room temperature is mercury you must have seen thermometers there is it contains mercury you know and when the temperature rises see when it is kept in a uh, under the arms in the body the temperature it shows the it it rises up it rises up to the mark see you must have seen thermometer this is these are the uh, gradations over there these are the temperature ranges and there is a bulb where mercury is there when this bulb comes in a contact with hot object this mercury rises up right and then it shows the temperature just these are the temperature gradations over there in the thermometer you can just uh, check out you must be having thermometer at home so the only metal which is liquid at room temperature is mercury do remember this students it's very important rest all the metals are solids at room temperature the next property is hardness hardness means how hard it is metals are hard metals are hard and have high melting and boiling point melting point is what the temperature at which a solid melts that is it changes into its liquid state boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid changes into its vapor state at a particular atmospheric pressure so metals are hard and have high melting and boiling point see melting point of aluminum is 660 degree centigrade it melts at this high temperature likewise of gold is 1063 degree centigrade copper is even high 1083 degree centigrade that is in order to melt copper in order to convert copper from solid or 
solid to its liquid state or transform copper from its solid to liquid state. This much high temperature is required, right? So metals, they are very hard and they have high melting and boiling point. There is again some exception. The metals like sodium and potassium, they are soft and can be cut with knife. This is an exception to the hardness. We say that metals are hard. But students, metals like sodium and potassium, they are soft and they can be cut with a knife. Do remember these exceptions. The exceptions, the sodium and the potassium. Then metals have high melting points. The exception here again is gallium. Gallium is a metal. Gallium. It is an exception. It melts on the palm only. So it has a very low melting point. We can say that it melts at room temperature. Right? It melts on the palm only. So if I am taking gallium in my palm, it will melt. So this is an exception. Right? So these are the properties of metals and also metals have high densities. Do you know what is density? You must be knowing. You must have started about this. What is density? Density is the ratio of mass and volume. So what is it saying? This point that metals have high densities. It means the mass of metal is very, very high. Then only it will have high density. So metals have high densities. So these are all the properties of metals. Metals are, let's revise it. Metals are malleable. That is, they can be drawn into sheets. Metals are ductile. That is, they can be drawn into wires. Right? Metals are good conductors of electricity. That is, they conduct electricity. Metals are good conductors of heat. That is, they conduct heat. Metals are sonorous. That is, they produce ringing sound when struck with an object. Metals are hard and they have high melting and boiling point. The exceptions are sodium and potassium. They are soft and can be cut with a knife. And the melting point exception is gallium, right? Gallium is a metal with a very low melting point. It melts at room temperature, right? And metals have high densities. Let's see the properties of non-metals. Non-metals, I'll just write now the examples, right? I'll write here so that it's you can understand it in a better manner. Metals. Iron, this I am writing because you are aware of these metals. Copper, gold, silver, platinum. I will also write the examples of non metals. See, there is chlorine written over here, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, bromine. Right, helium, phosphorus, sulfur. So these are all non metals. Now let's see the difference. First of all, metals are solids and very hard and hard, except mercury. Mercury is a liquid. Except sodium and potassium, which are soft metals. But in case of non metals, the non metals may be solid, liquid, or gases at room temperature. They can exist as solid, say iodine, that it exists as solid. Sulfur, it exists as a, in the powdered form. It can exist as liquid, that is bromine. Bromine exists as a liquid. Oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, these are all what? Gases. So this is one of the basic difference. The next is non-metals are brittle. 
they break into pieces when hammered with an object. Say a non-metal which exists in a solid state. For example, if a form of carbon. That is coal or graphite. It can be, it is very brittle. It can be broken down into pieces or even can be powdered when beaten with a hammer. Now here also there is an exception. That is diamond. Diamond is very hard. Though it is a form of carbon. Do remember this, right? So diamond is a form of carbon. Diamond is a form of carbon, which is a non-metal. But it is very hard and has got very high melting point. Right? So, there is an exception over here. Do remember this exception. Do remember this. Diamond is a form of non-metal which is very hard and has got high melting point. Rest all the non-metals are brittle. Non-metals are non-ductile. What does it mean? That non-metals cannot be drawn into thin wires. So these are existing as gases. These are existing as liquids. Except for few non-metals which exist as solid. Sulfur exists in the form of powder. Or it forms crystals, but it is it cannot be drawn into wires. Just like metals, right? Metals can be drawn into wires. Sorry, just unlike metals. Metals can be drawn into wires, but non-metals cannot be drawn into wires. Non-metals are bad conductors of heat and electricity. They do not conduct heat and electricity, except a form of carbon that is graphite. That is again an exception. Do remember this. Graphite is a very good conductor of electricity. Though it is a form of carbon which is a non-metal. Right? Non-metals are not sonorous. They are non-lustrous. Not sonorous means they do not produce that ringing sound when it is struck with a hot object. And also non-lustrous. Non-lustrous means they do not have a shining surface. Say metals. Metals have a shining surface. That is why metals are said to be lustrous. Whereas non-metals are non-lustrous. Right? So these are the physical properties of non-metals. Did you get this? Do remember the physical properties of metals and non-metals. Now students, on the basis of the difference in properties, the materials are categorized into metals and non-metals. I hope you have understood the properties. Now I will be concluding this session students. In the next session, we will be discussing about the chemical properties of metals and non-metals. Thank you students for being with me, for listening patiently. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Now just go through your textbooks so that the concepts are clear to you. Right? Thank you once again and do have a nice time ahead.